Mark Phelan is the car critic for the Detroit Free Press, and he recently wrote an article that I found fascinating about how to make a car virus-free. And Mark, first of all, thanks for taking the time to talk to me about this article. It's always a pleasure, John. Thank you for inviting me. So you found in, in the course of this that the public is already very interested in getting cars that might be able to keep viruses out of them. Absolutely. I, I was fascinated to discover that a, a significant reason that some people who didn't really care if they owned a car before now think they may want to is that they think it gives them more control over their environment in terms of cleanliness and, and disinfection. Uh, and, and that is also something that could weigh against uh, some mass transit uh, options. I, I was very, very fascinated by that. Yeah, there's been uh, uh, some talk about uh, maybe people will not get onto crowded trains or subways or things like that and, and maybe go and get their own personal car. That appears to be the case. There was a survey that was done in five different countries around the world. So it's not just Americans who we know are reluctant to use mass transit, but people in in countries that have got a a history of of mass transit were having second thoughts about it uh, because of safety concerns, because of because of infection concerns. One of the things I found so fascinating in your article is that automakers and suppliers are looking at using ultraviolet light to sterilize the interior of a car. Tell us about that. Fascinating. There's a company on the west coast of Michigan that is already selling ultraviolet sterilizers for the inside of ambulances and some first responders vehicles. And now they are talking to mass manufacturers to, you know, they didn't give me any names, but, you know, the brands that we all see in, in cars every day of the week about perhaps having UV C is the most promising uh, and, and the most you know toxic light uh, to, uh, to 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 sterilize the inside of cars. Uh, you want to make sure that there's nobody in the car when you do it. Uh, so a, a, a motion detector or something uh, is part of the package too. But the thought is, you know, at the end of the day, uh, when you're done, your car would automatically disinfect itself. And perhaps during the course of the day, if you stop for 15 minutes here or or there, it would get a short disinfection, which would, you know, kill some of the bugs that might have uh, uh, come in during the, the, you know, whatever driving you had been doing earlier. Uh, So that's that seems to be, you know, very feasible in the relatively near future. And explain that a little bit, because I always thought ultraviolet light or UV light is UV light. And what I learned uh, reading your article is that there is, what, A, B, and C different wavelengths of it. And it's fascinating. And C is the shortest wavelengths and the most toxic. And fortunately for us, the atmosphere keeps that from reaching you know, our level. But, but ultraviolet C uh, is will, will kill most uh, bacteria and viruses, um, you know, like a ray gun. Frankly, uh, it's very effective. Uh, they were also talking about possibly putting bulbs to uh, emit this inside the ventilation systems, so that the air that was being blown through the cabin would also be purified regularly. Uh, and that's something that you could do, obviously, while people were in the vehicle. You wouldn't have to wait till it was empty. Uh, but it, it, it's it's fascinating. It, it is a technology that's used in healthcare and in medicine, and now it's getting a long, hard look. Uh, from vehicle manufacturers. Yeah, I know for a fact that ultraviolet light is used to sterilize operating rooms in hospitals. So uh, that tells you right there, I mean, they've got to be as clean as they can be, and they use UV light to do that in a lot of places. And that's exactly you know the kind of thing that uh, this uh, th- this supplier uh, is talking about and, and provides already. And they've got in police and ambulance uh, vehicles in I believe Grand Rapids uh, and North Carolina. They have some of them in operation already. So now it's a question of you know is there interest? Uh, will you know d- is is this a short term desire by, by people or is it something that you know they will pay for? Is it worth engineering into a vehicle? Yeah, really, really be interesting to see how the automakers handle that. Yeah, one of the other things that you wrote about is antimicrobial material. What the heck is that? 
<laughs> well, in, in, in some senses, it's just material that's a little bit slipperier so that things don't get embedded in it. I mean, materials that are, are easier to clean. But there are also materials where you put a coating on the, uh, on the uh, and when we say material, we're talking about the dashboard, the steering wheel, the, the seat, um, the things that you touch all the time. And the emphasis would be on things like steering wheel and switches that your hands touch because then your hands might, might you know, touch your face. And, and th there are coatings that can be put on that that are toxic to some bacteria and viruses. Um, those are things that have to be renewed fairly frequently. So you know that, that's you know not a permanent solution for a vehicle. It, it's something that you'd have to have you know refreshed from time to time. But it's another thing that's possible. Um, and, and there are also some vehicles, some materials that you know just smoother surfaces make it harder for things to you know get embedded in them uh, and live on. Yeah, and, and one of the things that you covered, too, is designing surfaces so they can be cleaned more easily. I guess just wiped down more easily. Exactly, exactly. And thinking about the surfaces that we normally don't think about in vehicles because they're hidden and we don't see them. The side of, you know, of, of the, the seat, you know, the, the underside of the seat. Uh, there's, there, there are aspects of this that are going to influence material choices and also probably some of the choices that designers make. One of the things that you, you wrote about as well is maybe spraying or fogging the interiors of cars. Yes, and another thing that you would want to do when the vehicle is empty, uh, but there, there was some talk about uh, having a mist of hydrogen peroxide that just gets wafted throughout the car. And, and these are all things you, you'd need to leave accessories, you know, running for, for power and stuff like that. But these are all things that could be programmed into a car so that, you know, if, if the vehicle is empty and locked and the motion detector, you know, says that there are no living creatures in it, that the fan just kicks up and there's a little reservoir of, you know, hydrogen peroxide, you know, maybe in, in, in the glove box uh, uh, that uh, it gets, you know, squirted into the HVAC system and you refill it every once in a while. It's a twist on what some luxury companies do with the you know, designer scents in their cars now. Yeah, both you and I have dr driven those luxury cars that have got, they, they look like little printer cartridges in the, the glove box and you exactly. can choose the smell that you want in your car. So exactly. you're, you're right. Why, why not do choose something that kills all the bacteria as well? Right. It, it, there definitely seems to be interest in, in that. And one of the things that the suppliers you know, all said is that they're studying right now because they want to figure out, is this a concern that people will still have a couple of years from now or, or is it short lived? Uh, but, you know, I, I and that that is the unanswerable question right now. But there's a lot of interest and in investigation going into all these things. Yeah, and, and I want to come back to that in a moment, but uh, you also talked to uh, Eric Noble at the Car Lab, one of my favorite guys in the business, and he was saying, yeah, it's great to do all this stuff, but it better look good, because yes. if it do, if it's not visually appealing in, in the way that you implement this, people are just not going to want it. Absolutely. That, and that was a brilliant point that, that Eric made, that you, you can't expect people to trade to, to accept this thing, these things, if they come with a material, with an, an interior that is all hard surfaces, unpleasant to look at, unpleasant to touch. They, they really have to find a way to make it work with, you know, aesthetics and current design trends. You know, we've been talking mainly about personal ownership of cars, but this has got to apply to all kinds of mass transportation vehicles. And one of the things you even talked about was built-in hand sanitizers. Yes, yes. And, and that's one of the you know, things that could be done relatively easily. Although I have gotten a couple of uh, letters from readers asking, if I leave the hand sanitizer in my car on a hot day, will it you know, still be viable uh, when, when I come back out. And th that's a question that would have to be answered. I mean, you, you, sometimes some liquids expand. You don't want your hand sanitizer exploding. And in fact, some vehicles, Ford, as you know, is uh, using a system where police vehicles can be programmed to heat the interior up to 133 degrees, which is you know, hotter than you get sitting parked in, in, in the Mojave Desert in, in summer. Um, 
and, and that will kill a, a lot of the viruses and bacteria. But if you had a plastic uh, container of uh, hand sanitizer, you'd mostly likely walk in and see that it exploded and the inside of your car was coated in sanitizer. So they're, they're going to have to look at how these things uh, can work together. But one of the easy things, frankly, would be to just put a little hand sanitizer dispenser somewhere in the car in the place where a cup holder is now, perhaps. Yeah, with that Ford system. You don't want to leave any chocolate bars or candy in the vehicle either. <laughs> You're right. I didn't even <laughs> You'd have a big mess. But you know what's interesting and why I think that uh, the public could go for this is, you know, we've been talking about COVID-19. But what about the the flu? I mean, the, the, the flu is every single year and everything. And if you had a car that you knew was going to give you a little bit more protection, doesn't mean you're not going to get the flu somewhere else. But I, I think people would go for it. Absolutely. Well, and, and to get back to a point that you, you know, alluded to a minute ago, if you're using a taxi or a ride hailing vehicle or an autonomous shuttle, in that case, you might really want it. And hotel shuttles and things like that, you know, vehicles that, you know, they've got 20 different people in them, you know, every half hour. If you, know, if, if you are the shuttle company that says, our sh shuttles sit parked for five minutes while we heat them up to 135 degrees and, and you know blast them with UVA. Would you pay an extra dollar you know, a day to to park in that lot when you go to the airport? I think a lot of people would. Yeah, that's great. It's amazing, you know, that this virus pandemic has created new opportunities. You know, at the same time, it's causing all kinds of bad things, but I've people are going to be looking for new ones. Yeah. Mark Phelan, thanks so much for taking the time. Anybody who wants to look for the art article, go to freep.com. That's F-R-E-E-P.com. Do a search for Mark Phelan. You'll find that article. Mark, Thank thanks you, again. R really well done. I, 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 My hat's off to you. That was very well reported. Very kind of you, John. Have a great day. <laughs>